So as of right now, our programs are pretty consistent. They can't do a whole lot. They simply flow from top to bottom. Executes a line of code, goes on the next line of code, does, and then just rinses and repeats until the program is done. Today what we're going to do is we're going to try and break out of that mold. What we're going to do is we are going to create a point where we can temporarily break away from this code, perform another task, maybe some code over here, and then come right back to where we left. Now, this code um, is going to perform some specific task. It's not just random code, of course. Um, later on in the program, we will also have the ability to repeat this process with the same block of code or a completely different block of code if we choose. We might have more code over here. Let's say code 2, which we'll be able to go to and come back in. The idea of breaking away gives us a little bit more flexibility as programmers. The idea of being able to reuse that exact same code gives us an enormous amount of power as programmers. So this is what we're going to be focusing on today. So to start off, let me draw you a bit of an analogy. Imagine for a second that it's time to graduate. And when it's time to graduate, every school has a principal that has to sign a whole bunch of diplomas. Let's say 400 diplomas. Now those 400 diplomas need to be hand signed, otherwise it's not legal. So the, pro the principal needs to sit down and sign each individual one. This of course is a very tedious process and can take a lot of time. So it'd be nice if there was a little bit of a way to simplify the process. Well there is. Now an any individual can create a legal signature stamp. They just have to get it approved and everything like that. Now that's not the point. The point is all they have to do is sign their name once send it off to the stamp manufacturer. That manufacturer will send back a stamp that is a rubberized identical version to that person's signature. They've essentially created a system that allows them to repeat the process instantaneously. All they require is the stamp and some ink. Now, now that teacher here, now the principal has the ability to hand off that, that work to somebody else. Yes, the principal can still do it himself or herself, or he or she could hand it off to a secretary, a vice principal, or somebody else. And all they have to do is put it in some ink, stamp it on the page, put it in some ink, stamp it on the page, and rinse and repeat 400 times, and they're done. A lot faster and a lot less painful on the wrist than actually hand signing every single document. What we're going to learn today is the ability to, re is to, uh, the ability to replicate this process and automate our work and simplify it. Give us the ability to reuse something that we've already created once. So we don't have to keep doing it over and over and over and over again. To do this, we're going to use something called a subprogram. A subprogram is a very simplified thing. Let me just get a little space here. Let's get rid of all this. Now, a subprogram. is exactly what you think about when you hear the term sub. When we see a sub menu, we think it's a menu within a menu. Well, this is the exact same thing in this process. A sub program is a program within a program that performs a single task. It's important that it's only doing one task because if something goes wrong, it makes it a lot easier to fix and it makes it a lot easier to um, change or even um, completely rip out later on if, the, if that's the need. So subprograms can be reused to perform the exact same single, ta single task as many times as you want. In fact, you've already been using subprograms a lot. Now, depending on the programming language you're working with, in... Um, in JavaScript, you might be working with like, you might use something like math.pow. C sharp has something similar with the capital P. And there's other languages as well that we deal with that do things like um, reading text from the user, outputting text on the screen. The, and to do all this, we've been using subprograms to perform these simplified tasks. 
So today, we're going to figure out how we can actually build them on our own. But why do we actually need these things in the first place? What is the point? Well, we're going to use subprograms for two reasons. The first reason is reusability. There we go. Reusability, the ability to repeat a block of code infinitely without having to write it out each time in our program. Imagine a program where you had to ask for and retrieve a thousand usernames without this ability. Imagine creating um, the text boxes and the buttons and everything like that to do this. Obviously, this is a pretty tedious, pro pretty tedious process. In JavaScript, we actually use a function already to do this with the button click functionality in um, in C sharp, we do things like console.write line to prompt the user and then console.read line to read in the thing, read in the data. Now this data, now this this process is then repeated a thousand times, once for each user. That's a lot of work. Or we can create a function or a subprogram, sorry, we can create a subprogram and just reuse that same subprogram a thousand times. So that leads me to my second reason. Readability. Sometimes it's not even an action that's repeated. Sometimes it's just a complicated block of code that is difficult to understand without f combing through with a fine tooth comb. It can be very challenging. So remember, readability is, the, is how easy it is to understand our code at a glance. Now, if I have to sort through and filter through a bunch of complicated code, let's say 20 lines of math and everything like that, as a programmer, if, I, if I'm not the one that wrote the code, I got to sit there and I got to think about what's going on. Or if there was a subprogram, a single descriptive word could replace that entire block of code. So for example, you might have an entire block of code that uh, reads in all the user's information and processes it into, uh, into a file or whatnot. That is fairly complicated and there's a lot of work being done. Or I might replace it with a single word that says, uh, that says manipulate user info or, or single phrase sorry I should say this single name has now replaced all that complicated code and reduced my code in terms of uh, what I'm looking at as a programmer so all subprograms can come in two flavors now it doesn't matter what programming language you're working with all programming languages have this they just kinda some of them just disguise it a little bit so they come in two flavors the first flavor is something called a procedure. Now, a procedure is exactly like the definition of a subprogram a reusable block. Well, let's cross that out, sorry. Let's say, let's keep it consistent. A reusable program within a program. that performs a single task. That's simple and that's straightforward. There's another type of subprogram called a function. Probably a little bit more used than a procedure um, just due to its flexibility. So what this one is, is again, a reusable program within a program that performs a single task and here's the catch and returns a result to the programmer So a couple examples. For a procedure, you might see something like, um, in, depending on what language you're working with, uh, in JavaScript, you might see something like console.log. In C sharp, you might see console.write line. Oops. Okay, closing bracket. 
Okay, sorry. For a function, this has got to return a value. So in this case, you might see something like math.pow, uppercase P for uh, C sharp. And this pow is a function. It's a function of the math object, but it is a function that says, give me the exponent using the given base and the given power, or sorry, give me the power using the given base and the given exponent. And then that values and return back to the programmer. The user has no idea what's going on unless the programmer chooses to then use that data and give it back to them. So that is all the options we have for a subprogram. Um, what we need to realize is that uh, a subprogram has a very basic process. It works just like a variable. We must define it before we can actually use it. So somewhere in our program, we're going to define our subprogram, um, usually near the top of your program, uh, but not necessarily at the very top. It depends on what language you're working in. And then below that, that's where we can start using it just like our variables. We have to define them at the top and then we can use them later on. So that is